Hello, friends. All right, the adventure continues with the tale of Despero. Chapter 10, Good Reasons. The entire mouse community, as instructed by the most very honored head mouse, had gathered behind the wall of the castle's ballroom, the members top of three bricks piled high and spread out before them was every mouse, old and young, foolish and wise, who lived in the castle. They were all waiting for Despero. Make way, said Furlong. Here he is, I got him, make way. Furlong pushed through the crowd of mice. Despero clung to his brother's tail. Here he is. <gasps> There he is, there he is, whispered some mice. <gasps> He's so small. They say he was born with his eyes open. Some of the mice pulled away from Despero in disgust and others, thrill seekers, reached out to touch him with a paw or a whisker. The princess put a, a finger on him. They say he sat at the foot of a king. It is simply not done said a very distinctive voice of Despero's Aunt Florence. Make way, make way, said Furlong. I have him right here. I have Despero Tilling, who has been called to sit with the Mouse Council. He led Despero to the front of the room. Honored members of the Mouse Council, shouted Furlong. I have brought you Despero Tilling as you have requested to sit with you. He looked over his shoulder at Despero. Let go of me. Despero dropped Furlong's tail. He looked up at the members of the Mouse Council. His father met his gaze and then shook his head and looked away. Despero turned and faced the sea of mice. To the dungeon, called out a voice. Straight to the dungeon with him. Despero's head, which would have, was full of lovely phrases like happily ever after and lovely ears and I honor you suddenly cleared straight to the dungeon shouted another voice enough said the most very honored head mouse this trial will be conducted in an orderly fashion we will act civilized <clears throat> he said to Despero, son turn and look at me Despero turned. He looked up and into the head mouse's eyes. They were dark eyes, deep and sad and frightened. And looking into them, Despero's heart shuddered once, twice. Despero Tilling? Despero Tilling? Yes, sir, said Despero. We, the 14 members of the Mouse Council, have discussed your behavior. First, we will give you a chance to defend yourself against these rumors of your acts. Did you or did you not sit at the foot of a human king? I, I did, said Despero, but, but I was listening to music, sir. I was here, there to hear the song that the king was singing. To hear the what? The, the song, sir. He was singing a song about deep purple falling over a sleepy garden wall. The head mouse shook his head. Whatever you are talking about is besides the point. The question is this and this only. Did you sit at the foot of a human king? I did, sir. The community of mice shifted their tails and paws and whiskers. They waited. And did you allow the human girl, the princess, to touch her, to touch you? Her name is P. Never mind her name. Did you allow her to touch you? Yes, sir, said Despero. I let her touch me and it felt so good. <sighs> A gasp arose from the assembly of mice. Despero heard his mother's voice. Mon Dieu, it is not the end of the world. What was a touch? What of it? It is simply not done, called out Aunt Florence's voice from the crowd. To the dungeon, 
said the mouse in the front row. Silence, roared the most very honored head mouse. Silence. Then he looked down at Despero. Do you, Despero Tilling, understand the sacred, never-to-be-broken rules of conduct for being a mouse? Uh, yes, sir, I guess so, but, but did you break them? Yes, sir, said Despero. He raised his voice. But I broke the rules for a good reason, because of music and because of love. Love! shouted the head mouse. Oh, cripes, here we go again. I love her, sir, said Despero. We are not here to talk about love. This trial is not about love. This trial is about you being a mouse, shouted the very most honored head mouse from high atop the bricks. And you not acting like one. Yes, sir, said Despero. I know. No, I do not think you do know. And because you do not deny the charges, you must be punished. You are to be sent as ancient castle mouse laws declare to the dungeon. You are being sent to the rats. That's right, shouted someone in the crowd. That's the ticket. The dungeon, the rats? Oh, Despero's small heart sank all the way to the tip of his tail. There would be no light in the dungeon, no stained glass windows, no library, no books, and there certainly would be no Princess P. But first, said the most very honored head mouse, we will give you a chance to renounce your actions. We will allow you to go to the dungeon with a pure heart. Renounce? Repent. Say you are sorry that you sat at the foot of the human king. Say that you are sorry you allowed the human princess to touch you. Say that you regret these actions. Despero felt hot and then cold and then hot again. Renounce her, renounce the princess. Mon Dieu, shouted his mother. Son, do not act the fool. Renounce, repent. What say you, Despero Tilling? I, I, I say, I say, no, whispered Despero. What? said the head mouse. No, said Despero. And this time he did not whisper the word. I am not sorry. I will not renounce my actions. I love her. I love the princess. There was a bellow of a collective outrage. The whole of the Mouse community surged towards Despero. The mouse seemed to be come one angry body with hundreds of tails and thousands of whiskers and one huge hungry mouth opening and closing, opening and closing, saying over and over and over again, to the dungeon, to the dungeon, to the dungeon. The words pounded through Despero's body with every beat of his heart. Very well, said the most very honored head mouse. You will die then with a black heart. Threadmaster, he called, bring the thread. Despero marveled at his own bravery. He admired his own defiance. And then, readers, he fainted. Chapter 11. The Threadmaster Cometh. When Despero came to, he heard the drum. His father was beating a rhythm that had much more boom and less tat. Together, Lester and the drum produced an ominous sound that went something like this. Boom, 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 ta. Boom, 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 ta. Make way for the thread, cried a mouse who was pushing a spool of red thread through the crowd. Make way for the thread. Boom, 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 ta, went the drum. To the dungeon, shouted the mice. Despero laid back, blinking his eyes. How, he wondered, had things gone so terribly wrong? Wasn't it a good thing to be in love? In, in the story, in the book, love was always a very good thing because the knight loved the fair maiden. He was able to rescue her and they lived 
happily ever after. It, it said so in the book. They were the last words on the page, happily ever after. Despero was certain that he had read those words exactly, time and time again. Lying on the floor with the drum beating and the mice shouting and the thread master calling out, make way, make way. Despero had a sudden chilling thought. H had some other mouse eaten the words that had spoken the truth? Did the knight and the fair maiden not really live happily ever after? Readers, do you believe that there is such a thing as happily ever after? Or like Despero, have you too begun to question the possibilities of a happy ending? Happily ever after, whispered Despero, happily ever after. He said again as a spool of thread came to a stop beside him. The thread, the thread, the thread, murmured the mice. I'm sorry the mouse said behind the spool. But um, I'm going to have to ask you to stand up. I have to do my job. Despero got slowly to his feet. On your hind legs, please, said the thread master. It's the rules. Despero stood on his hind legs, said the mouse. I appreciate it. While Despero watched, the thread master unwound a length of red thread from the spool and tied it in a loop. Just enough for the neck, murmured the mouse. No more, no less. That's what the last thread master taught me. Enough thread for the neck. He looked up at Despero and then back down at the loop of thread. And you, my friend, have a very small neck. The thread master raised his arms and put them around Despero's neck. He leaned in close and Despero smelled celery. He could feel the thread master's breath in his ear as he worked at tightening the thread. Isn't she beautiful? The thread master whispered. What? said Despero. Shh, the princess. Isn't she beautiful? The princess P? Yes. She is lovely beyond imagination, said Despero. Just right, said the third master. He drew back and nodded his head. A lovely princess, just so. Just like in the fairy tales. I'll show you the picture after. And you love her as the knight loves the maiden. You love her with the courtly love and the love that is based on bravery, courtesy, honor, and devotion. Just so. How do you know that? Asked Despero. How do you know about fairy tales? Shh, said the threadmaster. The mouse leaned in close and Despero smelled the celery again, green and alive. Be brave, friend, whispered the threadmaster. Be brave for the princess. And then he stepped back and turned and shouted, fellow mice, the thread has been tied. The thread has been knotted. A roar of approval went up in the crowd. Despero squared his shoulders. He had made a decision. He would do as the thread master suggested. He would be brave for the princess. Even if, readers, could it be true? that there was no such thing as happily ever after? Here is Despero and the Threadmaster. And in the background, you can see the mouse council sitting on top. And there's two hooded mice that will be taking Despero to the dungeon. I will continue reading next time.